In this two-part series, we're going to create a report that uses real data to track the customer service or patient experience of hospitals in the United States with survey data. By the end of these two lessons, you're gonna have an awesome dashboard in your portfolio to show off to recruiters and hiring managers. And it's also really useful because you can use this report to look up which hospitals in your state provide the best service overall. In this first video, you will learn how to combine and clean two data sets in a single data extract that can be used for Tableau. And we're going to prepare that data using SQL. Now we're going to be using some basic SQL commands and joins for this process. And I will be utilizing Postgres in combination with PG Admin. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry, I've got you covered. You should check out this video first, which is my intro to SQL using healthcare data video, where you will learn how to run the basic commands. Then after that, I have another video which covers how joins work. I'll link the videos in the description down below. If you don't have that prior knowledge, some of the stuff is not going to make much sense. If you have no interest in the SQL prep of this project, I'll provide an already prepared data extract so that you can just jump straight into the second video where you will build the dashboard in Tableau. Now, a note about our data set, this comes from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, or CMS, and the data is called HCAPS. That stands for the Hospital Consumer Assessment of Healthcare Providers and Systems. The US government requires hospitals to collect this data in the form of surveys given to their patients. So patients have the opportunity to answer questions like, were you always treated with respect in the hospital? Or was the hospital always quiet at night? Was it clean? I have a video where I talk about what HCAPS is and how hospitals are incentivized to provide the best experience to the patients that they treat in a program called value-based purchasing. So check that video out if you haven't already. Now without further ado, let's get started. To get started, we're going to need two data files that we're going to use. And to get access to those files, all you need to do is click the link in the description down below. There should also be one like in the corner of my video here that should pop up in a second, but you click on that, should take you to my website, datawizardry.academy. Just type in your first name and your email account, and then you should get these files sent to you. It'll be a zip file, so you're just gonna to need to unzip it, and then you'll be ready. It will usually take three to five minutes to get that email. Sometimes it might take a little bit longer. Sometimes the email will also land in your promotions folder or your junk email, your spam. So do check those folders if you've been waiting for five to 10 minutes and you're still not seeing anything. And then if you're just not getting the email at all, you can also fill it out again, but with a different email. Usually that will do the trick. I've got my zip file here from the email. When I double click on that, that's gonna reveal two files within the zip file. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with here. I'm gonna start with this version one HCAPS 2022.csv file, so I'll let that load. So if I expand this, what we see is we've got a facility identification number, the name of the hospital, their address, their city, state, zip code, county. We've got the telephone number. We've got a identification measure ID that distinguishes all of the different questions that were asked on the HCAPS survey. We've got the HCAPS question as well as the answer description. If we scroll further to the right, we see this HCAPS answer percent, which is basically just the percent of the patients that put this answer down. We've got number of completed surveys for the time period over here and we've got the survey response rate percent so what percentage of the patients actually filled out the hcap survey and then as i mentioned we've got the start and end date here so this is the time period of 2022 that we're looking at for all these hospitals now that we've kind of glanced over the hcaps data i'm going to jump into the other data set in our hospital beds data set we're looking at each of the hospitals again but this time we're looking at the number of beds that they have in the hospital, the number of inpatient beds. And this is going to be really interesting information if we can link it up to the HCAPS data because different hospitals are going to come in different sizes. You're going to have large hospitals, medium hospitals, and small hospitals, or what are known as critical access hospitals, which are typically rural facilities that service a very small number of patients. We want to categorize these hospitals in different sizes because 
we want to be able to put these hospitals in peer comparison groups where we can evaluate medium hospitals against other medium hospitals in Washington State or Oregon or New York or California. So later on, when we import this data into SQL, we're going to create a sort of crosswalk that looks at the different ranges of the hospital beds, and it's going to assign them to a large, medium, or small grouping. Now, there's a few problems with this data set. First, let's look to this column here. This is the CMS certification number. And what that does is it uniquely identifies every single hospital in the United States. Every hospital is gonna have one of these numbers. The problem is that when I load this data, when I pull this data in Excel, sometimes these certification numbers have a leading zero in the identification number and Excel just removes it. And it's a really annoying thing that Excel does. We actually want to keep that zero in there. So when we import this data into SQL, I'm going to pad these numbers to the left until it gets to six digits in length, which is the size, the number of characters that is in the CMS certification number. Anytime that it sees something less than six digits, it's just gonna keep padding it until it gets to six digits. It's gonna pad it with a zero, and that's going to complete these certification numbers. Another problem is if we look at this data really closely, sometimes we'll find hospitals that have multiple dates listed. So the same hospital, but the date is listed out multiple times to account for the different times at which they reported out the number of beds that their hospital has. For this hospital, it first reported 57 beds and then 64 beds. How are we going to resolve this so that it's just one row per hospital? Well, what we'll need to do when we import this into SQL is we'll need to write a query that's only going to pick the most recent reporting of hospital beds. And then we're going to join that to the HCAPS data set so that we don't get a one-to-many type join. Another problem is that these dates aren't formatted in a very good way. SQL doesn't typically like dates in this format, or at least Postgres doesn't like dates in this format. Usually it likes dates in a format like 2021-07-01 or something like that, but Excel just kind of converts it back to a specific date type. Now we could format this and we could, uh, you know, we could make this SQL friendly, I'm not going to do that in this lesson because you might not have Excel. Uh, Excel costs money. I'm going to try to do this on the cheap and completely free. And so instead, we're going to do stuff like that in SQL. Speaking of Excel, a lot of these steps that I'm showing you could be done in Excel. You could prepare this data extract in Excel and then just load it straight into Tableau if you wanted to. But in addition to SQL being free, I'm also showing you all these steps in SQL because it's good to get as much practice as you can with it. You are going to be probably using SQL a lot more often than you'll be using Excel as a data analyst. Excel is great for static data sets, but when you become a data analyst, you're probably going to be working with data sets that are updated fairly frequently. There's going to be many rows that you're working with. Excel has certain limitations to how many rows of data it can store at any given time. And SQL is just much better prepared to handle large sets of data that are updated constantly. So it's good to get as much practice with SQL as you can. All right, let's write some code. I'm gonna go and find pgadmin. I'm using a PC, but if you're using a Mac, you can use like command space, I believe, to bring up that little finder tool and you can just type in pgadmin if you have it installed on your computer. Now, if you don't have pgadmin and Postgres installed on your computer, I do have a lesson where I walk through how to install pgadmin and Postgres on your computer. And I also walk through all of the SQL basics. So if you're not up to speed on the basic SQL commands, you should check out that video. So I'll link that in the video here as well as the description below. You're also going to need to know how joins work. So I also have a video on that that you can check out as well that I will leave in the description below. But assuming you know all of that and you have this stuff already installed on your computer, you're just gonna go ahead and log in. You might not even have a password like 
it might ask for one. I have mine set up so that I don't even need a password, so I'm just gonna jump straight in. I'm gonna expand my databases here, and mine happens to be called Postgres. Yours might be named something different. So I'm gonna expand that, and then I'm gonna go down to Schemas. Right now I have a public schema, and I've got this other one called Real Data. I'm gonna create a new schema, and I'm just gonna call that Hospital data, but you can call it whatever you want. So I'll click save. That's going to create this new schema. Schemas are like folders in a filing cabinet. They just kind of store different things and those schemas are going to hold different SQL tables. We're going to create two SQL tables underneath the hospital data schema for this lesson. What I'll do is I'll right click here and I'm going to go to query tool. That's going to open up this blank code editor. And at this point, I'm going to hop into GitHub to copy some code and I'm going to paste it in here and I'm going to run that code. So I will give you a link in the description below. When I click on that link, here's what the code looks like. I'm just going to select all this stuff here and I'm just going to control C or if you're using a Mac, command C and then I'm going to hop into pgAdmin. So we're back to our code editor in pgAdmin, so now I'm gonna do Control V or Command V if you're using a Mac. Now before I run this code, I'll just kind of walk you through what's going on here. This create table, if not exists, part of each of these tables, it's basically saying, hey, create this table with all these specifications here if it doesn't already exist. So that's what this if not exists thing does. This part here is matching up with the database that we're in. So mine is called Postgres. Yours might be called something different. If it is named something different, just make sure you label that here. Hospital data, so that's the name of the schema that we created. So just make sure that those names match up to whatever schema name that you gave it. Then hospital beds is just gonna be the name of the table that's gonna store our hospital bed data. And then this table is going to be called HCAPS data. These are the columns that each of the tables are going to contain. And this, so this is the name of it. And then this specifies what type of data that column is going to hold. So integer is just like a whole number. Could be the number seven, could be the number 22 or 99 or 500. It has to be a whole number and no decimal points. So that's what integers are. Character varying is a field that holds alphanumeric data. Um, and symbols and uh, things of that nature, very text-based data. So it can have a varying number of characters in what we call a string of text, and that can go all the way up to 255 in this case, but in this case it's only going to be 10. I'm storing the dates in both tables as a character varying and not a date because we want to make sure that we convert this text over into the right format in Excel, it was kind of in a um, month, month, forward slash, day, day, forward slash, year, 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 year. SQL doesn't always know what that format means, so I'm going to start it off in a text-based format so I don't confuse SQL, and then I'm going to convert it. So go ahead and highlight all of this, and then click the Run button. And now when I expand this, might take a couple times, or I might right click and then click refresh and then click on that arrow. And now you should see these two tables emerge. So we have successfully created these two tables. Now we need to import data into these tables. Now, just as a reminder, before we import that data, make sure that you have extracted the contents of your zip folder so that you can access the individual files within. There's gonna be a third file that I don't have yet. You can ignore that file. That's for people that wanna skip ahead to the Tableau tutorial. So we're just gonna be focused on these two files right here. So I'm gonna to go to my HCAPS data first, and I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna say import export data. Make sure that you are pointing to the correct location of these files that you unzipped. So that's gonna be this V1 HCAPS 2022 CSV. I'm gonna click open. Make sure that these settings that you're doing that I'm about to show you are dialed in precisely because if you mess up one of these steps, it could screw up the whole thing. And make sure that you also don't tamper with or modify those files that you get in any way because that also can disrupt the process. So I'm gonna choose CSV. I'm going to go to options. I'm going to make sure that header is on. It shouldn't look like this. It should be on. 
this thing should be off like this, okay? If, the, if it looks like this, that's wrong. You want it to look like that. Delimiter, it's going to be this comma right here. Make this blank for quote, make it blank for escape, make it blank for null strings, and you should be good to go. Just click OK, and then with any luck, it should show a green process completed right after you import it. Now, one of the things that's frustrating about this import process is a lot of folks will sometimes miss a step or they'll do something slightly different and they won't realize it and that will throw off the whole process. It'll just fail. So it can be really hard to pinpoint the exact issue that caused this failure to import that data into these tables. So what I would recommend is if you're seeing a red box that appears that says process failed, try right-clicking and then dropping this table and right-clicking and dropping that table, go back to GitHub, copy all that code that I had you run in SQL, paste it back in here again, run it again, then go back here, refresh to recreate those tables, and then re-download a fresh copy of that data that you get from the email and try importing it again, making sure that you're following every single step precisely. And if that still does not work, I'll show you something. To troubleshoot this, you can go to processes up here, and that's gonna give you a log of all of the attempts at importing the data into that table. Mine have successfully completed, but I did have one that failed. Let's pretend like this is my most recent attempt at importing the data and it failed. What I can do is I can go right here to view details and I can troubleshoot what happened. So you can go here, you can grab all this text and paste both of those into the comments and then I can try to help you through that import step. Let's continue on. I'm gonna close out of that. I'm gonna import data into my hospital beds table. So I'm gonna right click import export. I will locate that file. That's my hospital beds CSV file. And again, CSV, Make sure that header is on, OID is off, comma for the delimiter, empty quote, empty escape, empty for null, click OK, and that process completed. Now let's take a look at our data. I'm going to just right click on one of these and I'm just gonna open up a new query tool here. I'm gonna write out select star from uh, double quotes Postgres as my database dot hospital data. Make sure that this is following the correct case. So this has to be uppercase and that has to be uppercase. And again, has to be between double quotes and then dot hcaps data as my table name. So I run that and here we go. Here's the data that we imported. So that's working. I'm going to paste this right down below and then I'm going to type hospital beds to examine the contents of the other table. So I run that and I've got this data too. Now, ultimately, the only thing that I want from this table are the number of hospital beds per hospital. But the problem is that this isn't really formatted correctly yet because as we saw, some of these hospitals will list out multiple dates for which they had different numbers of hospital beds. So some of this information in here is outdated. We need a way to kick out the older reporting of the hospital beds. It's gonna be tricky to do that though, given the current format of these dates. They're in a text-based format. We need to tell SQL to reformat these strings so that they can be recognized as a date. And then once we do that, we can start working with this data to come up with the most recent number of beds per hospital. And then once we've done both of those things, we just need to correct the CCN number, the CMS certification number, so that it is always six digits in length. Remember that when Excel treats these like a number and there's a leading zero, it tends to chop off that leading zero. So we need to add them back in if we find that the CCN is less than six characters in length. Once we do all those things and we can join this data set to this data set, but this data set also has that same issue with the facility ID where it's removing those leading zeros because of Excel. So we're gonna to have to add those back in as well. And we also have the same issue with the dates on this one as well. These are also being treated 
in a text-based format, and we have to convert the dates on this table over to the proper format. I'm going to start with this table right here. So I'm just going to rerun this statement below. So first I'm going to write out each of these column names, provider CCN, we've got hospital name, we've got fiscal year begin date, fiscal year end date, and number of beds. The low hanging fruit here is the dates. So I'm going to use a function called to date to date, and what that's going to do is it's going to accept two parameters. In the first parameter, it's going to look at the column, and then in the second parameter, what it's going to do is it's going to say, what is the format of that column? And I'm going to start recognizing that as a date from now on. So I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna put in single quotes, and the date format right now, even though it's a text-based field, it's gonna, it's gonna be month, month, forward slash day day, so we're doing mm forward slash dd forward slash yyyy for year, 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 year. It's going to look at that text. It's going to say, ah, I see what you're trying to do. This needs to be a date, and it's formatted differently than how I usually process that date. I'm going to put that into the right format for you, and I'm going to change this from a text-based column to a date-based column. So it's going to do all of that, and I'm going to call this fiscal year begin date, just like we had before. So I'll just put a comma there, and I'll show you what happens when I, when I run all of this. So go ahead and click Run. Now we can see that this is now formatted in the correct way, and it's a date. Not character varying, but date. So it's a year, 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 dash, month, month, dash, day, day. This is the format that it's supposed to be in when it's displayed as a date in SQL. And we can easily do that again for the other column by just copying and pasting down below. And instead of begin date, I'll just make this end date and I'll call this end date as well. You can remove the old column here. We'll run that again. And voila, we've got our other column formatted in the proper way for the fiscal year end date. Next, I'm going to work with this provider CCN column. I'm going to make sure that each of these facility ID numbers, these CMS certification numbers, are all of a length of six. If they're not of a length of six, that means that the zeros we're getting removed, the leading zeros. Like this one here, for example, it needs to be uh, 030146 to make it six characters long. So I'm going to use the LPAD function for that, but notice that this column is an integer. The LPAD function is not going to work on integer-based columns, so I'll show you what I need to do for that. I'm just going to add a new line here, and I'm going to say provider CCN. I'm going to use a function called cast. And what that's going to do is it's going to convert this column into a text-based column. So I'll say as text. And then what I'll do is I will say lpad. And so the first argument is going to be that column provider CCN, which has now been converted to a text-based field. And I'm going to put a comma here. For the second argument, I need to tell SQL what the limit to the number of characters is. So we want to enforce a rule when we're padding the left side of these numbers here that it cannot exceed a total length of six characters. So I'll put six here. So in other words, you know, it's going to add zeros until it reaches six total characters in length. So it's going to add a zero to this, it's going to add a zero to this and this, but for the ones that are already six characters in length, it's not going to do anything because it's already at six characters. All right, so that'll be my second input for this function. And then lastly, I'm going to say what I want to pad this with, and it's going to be the number zero. So I'll put all of that together and I'll say as provider CCN and we'll see what that looks like. Go ahead and uh, run that. And it looks like I have an error here because I forgot to add a comma here. So I'll add that comma in, and then I will run this again. 
And now we can kind of compare these side by side. Here we see that there is a zero next to the 30147. Originally it was just 30147. Now we've got that zero being added until those facility IDs get to a total length of six characters. So we're adding those leading zeros back in to the provider CCN and we're gonna keep it in text format. So we can go ahead and just remove this column here. And then I'll run that again, see how that looks. Perfect. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to remove the hospitals that have older data in this data set. So some of these hospitals are going to contain multiple rows of data to show each time they submitted the number of hospital beds to CMS. So there's gonna be newer data for some of the hospitals and older data. We wanna kick out all the older data that might exist and only keep the most up-to-date information that we have in this data set. I'm gonna use a combination of a common table expression and a partitioning statement. So let me show you what I mean by that. A common table expression is simply a way to store data in a, like a box and you're gonna retrieve it later. Okay, that's how I like to think of it. We're gonna build this sort of box that's gonna temporarily hold some of this data so we can reference it later. So I'll say with, uh, I'll say, I'll call this hospital beds prep and then as. This word with here is going to kick off our first common table expression. Hospital beds prep is going to be the name of that common table expression. As is required after the name of the common table expression. And then you put everything within these parentheses here. And I'm going to have other common table expressions after this one, but the first one always has this with wording. I'm actually gonna comment this out because that's distracting. So if I do select star from hospital beds prep and then I run all of this at once, you can see I get the same results here. What the common table expression is going to allow me to do is it's going to allow me to put my preparations of these data sets through a series of steps and it's gonna be a lot more clean to read. I could use subqueries for this, but I find it messier to read. So instead I'm gonna use a common table expression to go through a series of steps here and you'll see what I mean in a second. So now that I've got this wrapped up in a common table expression, I'm just gonna add one more thing to the common table expression. I'm going to add an additional column to this data set here. That last column is going to be a partitioning statement and we're going to utilize row number over that partitioning statement and it's going to assign a one to the most recent value if the hospitals have multiple rows of data. So it's gonna look for the most recent thing, it's gonna give it a one for that most recent thing. Then it's gonna go down that list and it's gonna give two for the second most recent thing and three for the third most recent thing and so on and so forth. So let's do that now. The way I'll write that is I'll say row number. Okay, so that's gonna count off all of the rows over, and then we'll put another set of parentheses over here, partition by, and what this is going to do is it's going to cast a window over each CCN number. To give you an example, and I've picked an interesting one here, this facility ID number, this 054157, it refers to a hospital, Glendora something, so it was first referred to as Glendora Oaks Behavioral Health Hospital and it used to be 21 beds, and now it's Glendora Hospital. Actually, they changed their name, and then from this point to that point, they reported as having 63 beds. So not only did they have a name change, but they also increased their number of beds. What the partition statement will do is we're gonna partition by the provider CCN, and so it's gonna look at this sort of window here, and then we're gonna set it up so that it's going to assign a one to the 63 because that's the most recent, and then the two as the second most recent. But for these other hospitals, like this one here, Motion Picture and Television Fund, uh, that one is only gonna have one row, so that by default is gonna be one. Barker's Field Behavioral Health Hospital, that only has one record, so that's just gonna have a one because that's the most recent and you get the idea as we go through these other hospitals here. So I'm gonna cast my window over the provider CCN, 
And once I cast that window, I also need to put in this a wording that says order by. Now for the order by, I want to use fiscal year end date to assign one for the most recent thing that happened and two for the second most recent thing and three and so on. But if I were to say fiscal year end date, well this by itself is referring to the original column that we had to convert. So because I'm not referring to this thing that I converted, it's going to kind of screw up the partitioning statement. We don't want that. We want the corrected fiscal year end date up here. Otherwise, it's going to be in a text-based format. It's going to mess everything up. So I'm just going to copy the work that we did here with these two functions here. And I'm going to actually make this my order by. So it's going to take that original fiscal year end date that was in a text format that wasn't in a date format it's going to convert it into a date, and then it's going to order based off of that. And then I'm going to say in descending order, so that it's going to look to the most recent thing is number one, and the second most recent thing is number two, and so on. And then I need to call this column something, so I'll say as nth row. So to wrap it all up, to explain everything that's going on here, row number is going to get cast over windows that are going to be set over the provider CCN number. So this is an example of a window. We've got two rows for this particular window, so row number is gonna act twice in this window. However, for most of the hospitals, they only have one row, so this row would only have row number once, and that's just gonna get a one by default. This is gonna get a one by default because it only has one row. Partition by is saying how we're going to cast that window and we're just saying it's over the provider CCN number. Order by is going to dictate when and where we put the one and the two and the three and so it's going to do that by taking this converted date in descending order. So it's going to say look to the most recent thing for this fiscal year end date that's been converted from text to date and it's going to start with the most recent thing, that's going to get a 1, and then the next most recent thing is going to get a 2, and so on. So that's everything that's going on here. Once we move out of that window into a new CCN, that whole row number ordering is going to reset itself. So putting it all together, let's run this. Looks like I have an error here. It looks like I'm missing a comma, so I'll just put that comma in, run it again. Now we can see a lot of 11111 here because a lot of hospitals only have one row. What I'll do is I will order by the provider CCN number and then run this again to see if I can find something that has uh, two records here. So I'll scroll down until I find something. And here's a hospital right here. We've got Heldsburg District Hospital, and one is assigned to the more recent thing, two is assigned to the second most recent thing. Here's another hospital, Healthbridge Children's. One is assigned to the most recent thing, and then two is assigned to the second most recent thing. And we have another one here. One is assigned to the most recent thing, two is assigned to the second most recent thing. So it appears that it's working. All right, so now that we've set up that partitioning statement, I just want to check to make sure that there are no duplicates that would remain if I were to set a filter to only look for the ones and not include the twos and the threes. So I'm just going to say select star from hospital beds prep where nth row equals one. I'm going to group by provider CCN. So there should only be one row per CCN. Each hospital should only report out the number of beds once. And so I'm going to group by the provider CCN. I'm going to say select CCN as well as the count of, of the rows. So I'll call this as count of, of rows. I'm going to order by the count, I'm going to say descending, to see if anything shows up that's greater than one. If there had been any hospitals that were greater than one, they would have shown up at the top here. So that proves to me that we do not have any hospitals that are reporting more than one number of hospital beds. We've done our task in kicking out all of the duplication. So it looks like we're good to go. So we can get rid of this and I'm going to take this code here. I'm going to paste it down below. 
I'm going to jump into this HCAPS data set now. We need to do the same thing that we did up here with the facility ID where we pad it with zeros until it gets to a character length of six. So that's pretty quick and easy. I'm just going to copy this function that we have in the first common table expression. And I'm going to bump this asterisk down here. I'll give it a comma and I'll paste this right above that. So LPAD cast, and then instead of provider CCN, that's actually gonna be called facility ID. These are both the exact same thing, but you know, I'll, I'll call it provider CCN uh, with this new function, just to keep it consistent with what we have up here. And let's run that to make sure it works. And there we go, we see provider CCN on the left, adds that zero when it's short of the six characters and it adds it until we get to the six characters. You can compare that to the original, which doesn't have the leading zero. And another quick fix that we need to apply, we need to convert these dates again because they're in the wrong format. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two functions up here and I will paste them right here and I will put my commas right over here. And since I'm putting my commas to the left here, I'm actually gonna just do the same thing with this common table expression, just for consistency. So if I put my commas over here, that means I'm gonna have to remove the ones on the right side. I just like things to be clean and consistent. All right, so to convert these two dates in our HCAPS data set, we need to remove this fiscal year begin date because these are called something different. This is just going to be called start date, and the other one's just, it's called end date. So we're referring to the start date and the end date. We're putting it into that same function where we're saying, hey, just so you know, SQL, this is in a month, month, forward slash, day, day, forward slash, year, 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 year format, but we want to recognize that as a date. We want to convert that text-based field that looks like a date to an actual date, and that's what this to date function is going to do. And we're specifying the start date for this function and the actual syntax that it's currently stored in. It's going to convert that into an actual date format. I'll call this something different. I'll call this start date converted. And I'll call this one end date converted. And then let's just run that and see if it's working. It doesn't look like it's working because I have some extra commas here that I accidentally included. Let's run that one more time. Now it's working. And you can see these new dates that I converted from the text space field as well. We're so close to being done with this. We just need to do a join. And then once we do that join, we just need to export this data into a flat file that we're going to use for Tableau. So we're almost there. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this thing here that we built, this query, I'm going to join in this common table expression to it. So we need to prepare some aliases for each thing that we're joining together. So for this thing here, I'm going to say as, and I'm going to just call it hcaps. That'll be my alias. And then I'm also going to join in this thing here, this common table expression. I'm going to left join it in. So left join hospital beds prep. And I'll just call this as beds. So that'll be the alias for this common table expression. I'll say on to specify the join conditions. And so it's gonna be hcaps dot something is gonna equal beds dot something. Basically what you're doing when you're performing a join is you're connecting two tables together based off of the rows so that you have access to more columns in one bigger data set. You're kind of squishing these two tables together so that there's more columns to select from. But to make that join happen, you first need to specify how you're going to connect the rows between the two data sets together. And you do that by specifying the rows underneath certain columns. So if we want to augment this data set that has the HCAPS data with the number of beds in each hospital, we need to look to the provider CCN number. So I'm gonna say provider CCN for the HCAPS data set. So provider CCN and beds is gonna be provider CCN. 
So it's going to look to the two columns in each of those data sets, the provider CCN number, and it's going to say, all right, for each of these rows where we have this 010001, look for that same row under the provider CCN column in the other data set and connect that row and just keep doing that until we have everything matched. Now this is going to list out that 01001 multiple times compared to just the one time for the other data set. It's just the beds common table expression is just listing out each hospital and the number of beds that they had once. We updated it so that's only pointing to the most recent reporting of their number of hospital beds. So this is going to be a many to one join. We shouldn't expect to see our row count increase at all from this 299,925 rows that we currently have in the HCAPS data set due to this many to one join. Now if you need a refresher on how joins work, I highly recommend that you check out this video to be able to fully wrap your head around everything that I'm doing here in this join. I'm actually going to add one more condition to this join statement. I'm going to say and, and I'm going to require that for this join to actually happen, there also needs to be nth row from this common table expression equal to one. So I'll say, so I'll say hcaps dot nth row nth row has to be equal to one. So what's going to happen is this join is going to say, all right, Starting with the HCAPS table, let's look up that same facility ID in the hospital beds common table expression that I have. It's going to pull in the number of beds, but it can only do that if this nth row is equal to 1, meaning that it is, it is the most up-to-date number of beds that we're pulling from this common table expression. So we're not only matching on the CCN between the two data sets, but we're also only allowing this to proceed if it's pulling the most up-to-date number of beds reported by that hospital. So hopefully all of that makes sense. Let's see what happens when I run this, keeping a close eye on this number down here, 299,925. Let's make sure that that doesn't increase when I run this. So I run it, and we have an error. Now you might be looking at this and you might be saying, hey, what's wrong with this? There's nothing wrong with this because we have this column up here that we're defining. Why is it getting confused by that? Well, let's take a look at what the error message says. It says hcaps.providerccn does not exist. Huh, that's weird. Why does it think that it doesn't exist? We have it up here. This is a really good error to keep in mind because we often think of SQL as running from top to bottom, but that's not actually how it works. When I write out a SQL statement like select my, my columns here, so I'm selecting my columns, and I'm saying from table one, and I'm joining table two on certain conditions, and I'm saying where, and I, maybe I'm doing a group by and having. You know, when you write out a statement like this, SQL does not actually carry out those commands from top to bottom. Instead, it's actually running the from and join stuff first. So it's looking to the tables first, then it's applying the where filters, and then it's doing the aggregations, it's applying the having clause. Then way at the bottom here, it's actually selecting the columns that are being specified in the actual select statement. So. SQL actually has a totally different order of operations than probably what you're used to thinking. So I'm going to erase this and just kind of apply that theory to this error that we see here. When we run all of this code here, what's going to happen first is the from and the joins that are taking place. So it's going to look at this part here, and I will just kind of run that code just to kind of remind you what's in HCAPS. So we just we run this, it's going to see this part of the query and it's going to say, all right, I see this table here. I've got facility ID, I've got facility name, I've got address, I have the city, state, I've got all these columns here. And although it has this column called facility ID, it does not yet get to the point where it sees this conversion that we're applying to facility ID to turn it into provider CCN and adding that column into the data set. It just hasn't gotten that far yet. It's still stuck in the reading of this table. 
So we're still stuck in this phase when we're trying to pull in something that we're doing in the select phase. So that's why this is confusing the SQL query. It's trying to reference something that hasn't been built yet until the select phase. And because it's doing the from and joins first before it's got a chance to read this line, it gets confused. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. A simple remedy to that is just to take this thing that we're applying to this original column when we're converting it to provider CCN. And I'm just going to replace this thing with this code here. Now that should work. And I'll clean up all this stuff here and then I'll try running it again. We've got another error here. I'm applying the wrong alias in retrieving this column that we have in this common table expression that actually comes from hospital beds prep and that alias is beds so i need to make this beds so i run that and now it's working and we still have the same 299,925 records so we don't have any duplications caused by this join i'm just going to thought i did this earlier i'm just going to abbreviate this as h caps so that we're just pulling the columns from the HCAPS table with these columns as well. And I'm gonna pull in some of the columns that we can now access this common table expression that has the number of beds. I'm gonna pull data from that as well. And I'm just gonna pull the number of beds as well as the fiscal year begin date and the fiscal year end date and I'll preface those with the beds alias here. And that way we know the time period that the number of beds was reported for that hospital and also having that right next to the HCAPS data. So let's run that again. Let's just inspect what we have here to make sure everything's lining up. I do see that we have the number of beds, we got the fiscal year begin date, fiscal year end date. This might be confusing and might be confused with the start and end date of the HCAPS period. So to make that more clear, I'm just gonna call these something different. I'll say as beds start period and as beds end period, or maybe I'll call it report period for each of these report period. I'll run that again. And I think that's perfect. I think that we've got everything ready to go here. These dates over here are the old dates for the HCAPS data. They've been converted over here. So when we plug this into Tableau, we're just going to use these and not uh, these old dates. Now all that we need to do is just create a table based off of this result here. And then we're going to export the results as a text file. So I'll just write up a statement that says create table and then I will say postgres postgres dot and make sure these are in double quotes for the database and the schema that's hospital data I'm going to make this case sensitive like the uppercase H and the uppercase D here to match what I have over here and then dot and I'll call this tableau tableau file and I'll say as and that should do so i'll just run this and then i get this statement down below when i right click and i hit refresh i see this tableau file here i'm gonna go ahead and export the results now so i'm gonna right click i'm gonna go to import export data and i'm gonna save this wherever i want okay i'll, I'll just save it uh, right over here where my two starting files were so i'll save that to the same place and again i'll call this tableau file so I'm going to save that here, and this is going to be a .csv file, so make sure it's .csv. I'm going to make this CSV. Make sure that the header is selected to on when you're in the options tab. I make sure that delimiter is a comma, and I'm just going to leave these other three things blank here. So that looks good. I will click OK. And it might take a moment for the file to generate because we're dealing with like close to 300,000 records here but it looks like my process completed. So let's just inspect that and see what we've got. So Tableau file, looks like everything is in order. Everything looks normal. So we are now ready to import this into Tableau. It did chop off those zeros again, 
but if I were to close out of this and not save, and if I were to go back to this file and open it as a notepad file so that zero doesn't get chopped off when I do that. So we're finally past all of these steps here. The next step is to move on to the next video where I'll show you how to use this Tableau file to plug that into Tableau so that we can create a beautiful dashboard that will totally impress hiring managers and recruiters and you'll be able to use it to look up the best and worst hospitals in your state. So I hope you're excited. I know I am. I'll see you in the next video.